Welcome to part two of using the shell in Linux. So in the last video we covered piping and basic input and output redirection. Now piping is taking some program and taking its output, redirecting it to the input of program two, and we can keep doing that. So this would take program one's output, feed it to program two, take that output, feed it as the input to program three, and so on and so forth. In this video, we're just going to expand that a little bit. Um, we also covered output redirection by using the create and append, or just create and overwrite operators, and the input redirection. So take your input, so program, take your input from some files. If you need help with that, you want to review, watch the last video again, or just read some documentation. Good. So now we're at a point where we can cover, I just want to cover one quick thing, and that is the logical AND operator on the shell. And then I want to talk a little bit about variables and quoting, and some filtering that you might want to do, which is very useful for gluing together different programs with pipes to do some filtering on data. It's a very common use for piping. Good. To start with, um, if we take program and the AND operator, that's two ampersands, and then program two, what this does is very simple. This thing looks at the thing before it and says, is this true? That is, did this run successfully? If the answer is yes, it runs the next thing. If the answer is no, it does not run the next thing, it simply exits. So if program one works, program two will run also. If program one fails, program two will not run. This is useful for things like if the first program that you call, the first binary that you call, does something like do some stuff and then write to a file if it was successful, and then program two does something with that file, you know, if program one wasn't successful and the file never was created, then running some command on that non-existent file is silly, irrelevant, and will only lead to errors. So this is one common use for this construct. So for example, if we use list, we've got a file here. Uh, where am I? If we list this file on the desktop, it says, oh great, the file is file.txt. Sort of obvious. If we say list that file, and if you're successful, please echo back to us uh, astonishing success can't spell we'll get back the name of the file and astonishing success because it runs the first command that's successful and if the first one's successful it runs the second one which is echoing astonishing success if I mistype this or the file doesn't exist or give it some bogus data astonishing success does not get echoed back to us because first program exits with an error and says uh, cannot access that file, it doesn't exist. And so the second part never runs. This is just useful for when you're chaining things together. Useful things, for example, uh, if I've got a file that has some pattern in it, like for example fields delimited by this little colon character. We could do something like, we'll take that file, let's say that's the output that we get from somewhere, and we could cut using a delimiter this, use field. So what this is going to do is the cut commands takes the output of the first command through the pipe, looks for the delimiter colon, divides it on that into fields one and two, and we're selecting field two. So we get this back. Another useful one is sort. Ignore the leading white space, case insensitive. You can see did an alphabetical sort by first letter. If you're interested in sort, it's a really useful command. Learn this. Learn cut and sort. There are other things 
like let's say uh, if we say if there's a duplicate in here um, and this is the output of some file has duplicates you can also say unique that'll only print unique lines as opposed to everything uh, word count is useful as lines characters also something you might use and then the real heavyweight which is grep grep is a searching finding filtering tool um, and it can do things like pattern matching and other cool things grep is an amazing command it's large I would invest some time in learning it it's got a lot of features uh, some features you use a little bit, some you use all the time, like find something and then show me five lines before it and ten lines after it as well, that kind of thing. But at its most simple, and I suggest you start at its most simple, uh, it basically just returns a line that matches what you're looking for. So if you have some output and you want to filter it down to, let's say, just lines that start with user, you can do that. And where's our duplicate line? You can see it finds that twice. Your shell automatically highlights it in Ubuntu. Uh, but you can also use it to search files. So if you say, it'll do the same. So if you're looking for something in the file system, um, it can be cool. Now we've added two lines. And if I, for example, grep for someone in this directory Ugh. and all the files in this directory you can see it shows me the file that it was founded and then the line that returns that pattern so for example if we wanted to see all the files that contain the word someone and then let's say you can see it was found twice in this file so we don't want to see the same file twice we could do something like grab someone in there in all the files in this directory get it unique first so this will just result in two things and then third we want to cut using a delimiter of the colon and select field one which would be the file name right this gives us unique file names that contain the string someone right so we're grabbing for someone in this directory, all files, this is a globbing character, which we'll get into in a second. Looking only for unique things, and then we're cutting that using the colon as the delimiter, so here, into some fields, and we just want the very first field, so the leftmost field. So there you go. You have some idea of what it looks like to chain things together using pipe. And that sets you up for some more complex shell tasks.